Hi, my name is Johanna Lundy and I'm the principal horn of the Tucson Symphony. I'm also the horn professor at the University of Arizona. I'm here today to show you a couple details about playing the horn and getting to know the maintenance for your instrument. Uh, if you have a double horn, it's going to be a little bit heavier than a single horn, so that's one thing we need to consider here. Uh, for a smaller, younger player, uh, managing that weight can be a challenge. So eventually, I want to suggest that you consider supporting the weight of the instrument off the leg, that's what we call, call it when we hold the bell up, but until we get there, um, there are some accommodations that we can use. Now, as you'll see, if I'm gonna rest the horn bell on my leg and then bring the mouthpiece to me, oops, it's not the right height for my lip. So then I have to slump. I don't wanna slump. Slumping times every hour that you're playing times many years, ooh, you're becoming an uncomfortable human at that point. We want to think about using great posture, lifting up from the waist and supporting our body through the core and then bringing this instrument to us, okay? So like I mentioned, if we can lift it up, great. If not, there's another option that may work for you. Now this is not going to be the right height for me because I'm a full-sized human with a full-sized horn here, but if you can see what I've done, I've taken my, I scooted myself over a little my chair and I'm going to set the horn, so instead of on my leg, because for most young players the horn is going to come up to here too high, you can adjust that, make it a little lower by setting it on the horn, uh, chair, and then you can reach it that way. Again, I'm going to lean and look bad, so don't do it like that. right hand position. This is always a question that people have. And all, of course, why do we put our hand in the bell? Well, there's a longer explanation for that, but it came from um, the instrument that was the predecessor of this, which is a natural horn, which was just like a long tube, no valves, long tube. And we would actually change the notes, both with our lip and also by closing and opening our hand in the bell. So that's really where this started. So you can blame those guys from hundreds of years ago. What I want you to imagine is that you've uh, done all of your chores and you've worked hard all week and if you are getting any sort of allowance what you're gonna do is pay me <laughs> right or you're imagining yourself at your first job here so that flat hand a little straighter if you can see right not as cupped because that's gonna be too covered all right so I'm gonna suggest that you do straight and then you can either have the thumb be up like this or next to it the benefit of it if we put the thumb in line here is that we can rest the weight of the instrument on this larger surface. So this is some of the stuff that makes it easier to hold it off the leg is using the right position. So keep it straight, put it all the way in as far as we can. So I'm gonna run out of room eventually, but see how because it's straight, there's a nice opening you can see underneath my hand. Now, if I were to do that cupped one, look at how I'm distorting that opening. I'm really covering it. And so with the new instruments and the sort of evolution of things um, where we're headed with the sound concepts um, in the orchestral um, professional music world, street hand is gonna be better for you. Now, if you do wanna hold it up off the leg, if you kind of rotate this hand around, now you're talking about putting the weight on all of those fingers. So that's starting to be a pretty good support. So what I do, instead of holding it on the side, is I rotate around when I'm standing, and again, that gives me a lot better distribution of the weight.